Beautiful stuff trying to catch him out of a roll. Doesn't quite get it unless it knocks him off. Misses the edge guard. This is it. We nice. are not done yet. Can you feel it in the air tonight? Can you feel it in the air? Find out on the Fountain of Dreams. I think I would like this for Falco, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what Leffen has up his sleeve. You know, I, I don't agree with Leffen's decision here. Look at Falco getting all these free follow-ups. Again, 9%. All right, this is Try Hard Mango. Wow. He's Dump star. We're not getting a four stock, are we? And the crowd cheering for a four stock. This could be it. This is it! Oh! Four stock! Is this man the truth? Is he the truth, D1? We did a lot of stage to play with. Oh, Return that's it! The knee. That's it! Yeah, whoa. Whoa. Oh! oh! What was that? <laughs> This man no. has warrior blood in his veins. Get out. I'm freaking out, dude. Shine. Oh, that's it. Armada, your Armada. Your Armada. Armada has taken evil for the first time. Alliance. Who deserves it more than Armada? This, right. this man has worked so, so hard for the past 365 days. Back on stage like Opportunity for Ace Bucks. He calls it out. And that's going to yeah. be it. No, the so one reads it. So much pressure. The end! The end! 6 0! Mewtwo King is back! Paying left and back the favor from SmashCon. Oh, here, MVP pushing in. Can they get this first knock? Doesn't come in. Ross has to stay alive. Very low HP for the race. Very early iframe, so that's going to be a big setback there. But MVP is not the one we're worried about. They're just a setback here for TSM. Who is going to do it? TSM! You're your champion! This is still winnable for Reignite. Hey, Red right, Sharky, Sharky this is, is back in the game. Full forces now for Reignite. Go behind the rock here. We have the moment Respawn Beacon to play off of the gaming is engaging with Luminosity. Reignite can go in for the third party and take this entire victory. LG is out. Off the game is going to get into oh, the pool. They're all going to do it. Wide left play. And then just like that, Reignite is going to do it. They are your champions. Australia comes all the way to Europe and wins the ALGS. They do it. They do it, Fallout. Just took seven games. Are you kidding me? What is this? So you must be asking yourselves, why the freak am I putting Apex Legends and Smash Bros into the same video? Because if you haven't figured it out by now, Apex Legends and Smash Bros are like Eskimo Brothers. Maybe that's not the right way to put it. Uh, give me... Give, you see, way before I started playing Apex Legends, I was playing Smash Bros. I was really into fighting games at one point, and I still kind of am, but Apex Legends has kind of replaced that. I remember being into Smash Bros a lot, and specifically Smash Bros mainly back in high school, and I was keeping up a lot with tournaments and the pro scene during that time. This even carried on over when I entered college. As soon as I entered my freshman year of college, I was still playing Smash Bros, and I was mostly playing Project M at the time. But what kept me going back to a game like Smash Bros, and again, Smash Bros Melee, was a cynical capability because if it wasn't for that then it wouldn't be the game that it is today the game has been out since 2001 and even when i was in high school and even in college the game has still been evolving people are still learning things to do with the game the game is still progressing and now it's even returned to evo huh what was that wait you just i thought smash bros was going to be an evo this year and so i don't expect melee to die anytime soon so why am I comparing it to something like Apex Legends? Because Apex Legends, even though it's been out for only three years, there's something similar about Apex Legends that has a certain draw to it, and it's its technical capability. See, any game like Smash Bros is going to have its casual scene. Then you have a certain scene within that game that pushes the game forward, which is the, the competitive Smash community. And specifically for Melee, for Apex Legends, you have certain people within the community who are pushing the game forward and doing all these crazy things like movement techniques. What's possible with the game like Apex Legends, even though it's just an FPS and it's not a brawler like Smash Bros, there's still things that I think have still yet to be untapped within the game. And that potential is further beyond what is already known of Apex Legends. Firstly, I just want to preface this by saying that Smash Bros was never intended to be a competitive game. 
What Sakurai intended for the game was for it to be a party game, but he never envisioned the way that it would go competitively at all. Because people within the community of Melee started discovering what was possible and started advancing the game even further. New ways that characters were being used in the years to come after the game was released, such as Fox or Falco or even Captain Falcon. The meta just kept evolving over time. People just didn't stop continuing to grow the game. For a game that was released in 2001, it's incredible how much it's grown ever since its inception. What makes Melee culture so special is how much you can do within the game and people are still discovering new ways to play. All these movesets that allow people to play the way that they do in such a fast paced manner, like for example, L canceling or wave dashing or shine canceling or shore hopping or whatever it is, they've essentially redefined Melee. <laughs> Similar to Apex, you have a casual player base and you have fundamentals that people have to learn as soon as they start playing the game at the beginning. But as they continue to progress and they discover new ways to play and utilize their characters and their tools, whatever it is that the game provides for them, they continue to grow with the game and situationally use those tool sets to their advantage. For Apex, that would include, for PC players specifically, <laughs> tap strafing, for example, even wall jumping. I know maybe you can do it on controller, but wall jumping is a thing. Even super gliding. The only difference that I find between both Smash Bros and, and Apex, the key difference is how many people actually use those techniques between both games. Because for Melee, for example, Anyone that wants to get into competitive melee needs to learn the techniques that everyone has already discovered. For Apex, however, it's a little bit different because you have comp Apex. And again, it's a squad based game. So you don't have to do these crazy tricks like super gliding, for example. But there's still certain things that people can use to their advantage in situations like tap strafing or even wall jumping, though I don't think you'd see a lot of that in competitive Apex. But the top players of Apex and the movement players and the pub stompers more than likely will be utilizing techniques like tap strafing and wall jumping and super gliding. Tap strafing is a technique used in Apex Legends and it allows players to be able to make really sharp turns. It's sharper turns than you would be able to normally. For example, it can be useful in a, in a scenario where you're getting shot from behind and you're trying to turn at a corner and you need to make a sharp turn. If you have like that last sliver of health and you're trying to make that turn around that corner, that tap strafe can actually like really help. <laughs> With wave dashing, a technique from melee, it allows you to be able to maneuver around the stage and give your character momentum to provide better positioning for whatever situation that needs to be created or avoided. In melee, you have what's called an air dodge. And so in order for you to wave dash, you have to air dodge into the ground. And an air dodge is basically when you're in the air, for example, and you tilt the analog stick to a certain direction and you press a certain input together with that and that that allows you to be able to dodge in the air in a certain direction. So if you do it fast enough within a short hop, what they call it a short hop in melee, if you can do it within a certain time frame and air dodge into the ground, then that air dodge will create what's called a wave dash and you basically dash across the stage. That's literally what a wave dash is. You just dash across the stage and it either can push you forward or backward depending on the direction that you do it. So it's useful for getting close to the enemy and pressuring them or escaping situations. Similar to a tap strafe, you can use tap strafing to push into enemies, which is contrary to using it to make a sharp turn to be able to escape a scenario. Both techniques like wave dashing and tap strafing, one being from melee and one being from Apex Legends, are better for positioning purposes or to be able to maneuver the situation physically to your advantage. But in both cases, it's, it's how fast and how good your timing is. Tap strafing isn't really a hard technique to learn in Apex, but you have to be able to know how to use tap strafing in a certain time frame when you're in the air. Another example would be L canceling from melee, which means lag canceling. So lag canceling or L canceling for short allows the player to be able to do an attack in the air. And once they fall on the ground, they immediately reset into a neutral stance. In, in turn, this allows the player to be able to chain combos immediately without having to wait for the character to reset on its own within a delayed time frame. L canceling just allows for more fast paced gameplay within melee. But in order to successfully perform that L cancel, you have to time the right input at the right time once you hit the ground. We can compare it to something like super gliding, for example, which is a technique in Apex that allows you to climb a certain crate or wall. And as soon as you reach the apex, which is the height of the crate or wall, it allows you to lunge forward farther than normal. And although super gliding isn't necessarily a way for you to chain combos, 
you do have to time it perfectly, just like you would have to time an L cancel in melee. Sorry about that. Anyway, if you were to learn both techniques, if you were to learn both techniques, tap strafing and super gliding, you can pull off some crazy stuff. Like, check this out really quick. Similar to something like L canceling, which I said that allows you to chain combos a lot quicker. You can create the, the craziest nonsense that you, you could ever do in Melee. You see where I'm going with this? The techniques that both games provide allows you to be creative within the environment that you're placed in as well as the characters that you're using. I'm not going to go into full detail of how all that looks, but what makes a player stand out in either game is how they use the techniques to their advantage. It's about using those tools to adapt to the situations that you either get placed in or that you want to create. And if you want to take it a step further, technically Horizon is a character that has a passive ability that allows her to prevent landing lag. So whenever she falls to the ground, she doesn't have this delayed time frame of having to reset normally because she fell on the ground. And L canceling is a similar technique in melee that prevents landing lag. Something I find interesting about both games is the meta changes within the competitive setting of Apex Legends and Smash Bros. Melee. In Smash Bros. Melee, there's only a certain few viable characters that people really use in tournaments and for very specific reasons, reasons that I'm not really going to get into. But Apex Legends competitive kind of works in a similar way where a lot of professional teams choose certain legends within the game to be able to use in a trio format. Usually those legends that people use are between Gibby and Valkyrie. Valkyrie being for rotational purposes, so being able to get around the map a lot quicker and to be able to get a better position. And Gibraltar, or Gibraltar, I, who cares anymore? Gibraltar being the legend that is able to push fights with his bubble as well as providing protection and also reviving within the same bubble. These two characters are usually used in a trio format and the meta is subject to change. For example, sometimes the third usually swaps between either Caustic or Ash or even Wraith depending on what the comp is going for, sometimes even Horizon. And then today, for example, as of the recording of this video, TSM tried a different comp with Mad Maggie, Seer, and Valkyrie. Similar to Smash Bros. Melee, there's only like a select few list of viable characters that professional players in Smash Bros. actually use. And that would include either Fox, Falco, Peach, Sheik, Marth even. But like with that game, the meta is subject to change and there are other characters that probably have more potential that have yet to achieve certain results. And so in both games, it may not seem like it, but the meta is continuously changing. I know it might be weird to compare both games like Smash Bros. Melee and Apex Legends, but I can't help but sometimes think that both games have similar qualities in terms of tech and movement potential. If a game like Apex Legends and Smash Bros. Melee has such a high skill ceiling, then you know it's a good game. And if that skill ceiling keeps rising, then people will keep coming back to it. Sure, it might shut up the casual base a bit, but then you have a steadfast community of people who are trying to work towards improving and getting better and better. And personally, I think that's what matters.